Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from wherever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now today, Ruto had a meeting at State House with all the CSS and the PSS in his government to sign a performance contract. And uh, seemingly, if you look on uh, William Ruto's tone and what he talked about, it is clear that he is not happy on the performance of majority of these cabinet secretaries. And we're going to discuss that one separately. But again, there is something Ruto alluded to as far as the issue of coming late into the meeting as a sign of individuals firing themselves. He was very hungry and angry and mad at few CSS and PSS who came late to sign their performance record. And among the CSS who came late, we have Moses Kuria, CS for Trade, Industry and Investment, and Kedure Kendiki, CS for Interior. These are the people that Ruto was talking about. The other guys are PSS. But now focusing on CSS, Ruto is very clear that he wanted them to write to explain why they came late for signing of the performance contract. And uh, there is nothing like blaming on a traffic jam. He's very clear. Don't tell me anything about traffic. Explain why you came late. <laughs> Many people maybe mistakenly think that it is a ritual. And that is why people resort to the old incompetent excuses that there was traffic for them not to be in a public, in a, the most important public function. We have a job because we have a contract. If you cannot keep time with your employer, you have basically dismissed yourself. I mean, it's just as simple as that. So, for those who came late, who are members of the executive, I will be expecting a written explanation, and it should not include matters of traffic. On why they do not take these performance contracts seriously. Because if you do not take this performance contracting seriously, it means we do not take the contract with the people of Kenya on performance seriously. And that can be a very serious indictment on anybody. Now, beside William Ruto's statement, eh, Gashagwa had also talked on the same, addressing the issue of coming late into a meeting where the president had already arrived and uh, continuing with the exercise. Meona watu wale wamechelewa nikaona rais unaniona nimejua. Nikaona uso yake nikajua hapa kimehumana. Sababu leo ni siku ya performance contract. Ile siku muhimu sana ya kuja kuweka. Na wewe umefika pale rais anakaa. Tayari amekaa na rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya. Wewe umechelewa ukiwa kuona nani? Who else have you gone to see? These are things myself I don't understand. As I said, you know, mimi sielewi. Mimi mambo ingine sielewi. So, mimi boss na chunga kazi yangu. <laughs> Unajua rais tangu uniteue. I be late in your meeting one day only. Na rais wedi uli nichangaja zibu yo. <laughs> Because, ulisema utatoka hapa saa moja unusu tukutana airport saa mbili, ukatoka saa kumi na mbili unusu. Sasa by the time nimefika nikakuta umeketi. And I was embarrassed because where else was I when my boss is seated waiting? Where else would I be? How do you explain where uko wapi? Raisa meka, you work for him, he has arrived before you. I don't understand. I don't know how you plan, but hata uh, kama iko traffic jam, hii traffic jam haija kuja Kenya leo inajulikana tangu zamani. 
Mimi nilifika hapa saa moja unusu. PM alifika hapa saa moja unusu na mkutano ulikuwa saa tatu. Not because we have no what to do. Si hakuna haja kuamuka hii masaa na hii baridi tungelala. Lakini tunakuja kwa rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya who has given us a job who is very busy. Wewe utachelewa ukiwa wapi? So those are things as you sign these contracts you need to think about. But I want to assure you from what nimesikia asubuhi from today tufanye kazi. Marafiki wa rais wa zamani tufanye kazi. Uh, as we continue with this pangeline discussion, just a quick request for those who are watching and uh, you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing to our channel subscriber Samasa. Thank you so much. And again to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much and back to this discussion. Now, if you check on the body language of William Samai Ruto, the tone uh, Ruto is seriously angry by the fact that some people came in when he had already continuing with the exercise. He's not happy. But then, there's one person here who is at risk of losing a job. And that person might not be Kiture Kindiki. Moses Kuria. And maybe it is just because of Moses Kuria, that's why Ruto is getting much angry, angry with this issue. His anger might not be directed to Kiture Kindiki. But Kuria. Because the same was as Kuria embarrassed William Ruto's government to an extent he could not meet the US ambassador for trade and investment, who is also the presidential advisor on matters to do with the economy. She snubbed Kuria two times. In fact, not two, three. First time, she was to meet him in his office at Two River. Her kuenda. Number two, when she was meeting with the East Africa ministers for trade and investment. Kuria alifungiwa inji. And lastly, when she was meeting with the president in State House, Kuria was nowhere among those photos. Today, again, he's coming late in a meeting chaired by one William Samuel Root, his boss, a man who appointed him to that office. So look at that. How many mistakes does Kuria has? With all this, I'm seeing a preparation that Ruto is laying down on the ground to find a reason to either fire Kuria or take him to a ministry. It is not much lucrative compared to what is holding on as of now. There's some man we have had all the scandals to do with the edible oil in Mombasa. You talk about evading taxes and all those other things. And look at this. You, you're just first time in the office. The first thing that is coming out is even scandal before any performance in your office. <laughs> so, Moses Kuria, Chumachako Kimotoli. You are on the frying pan. Your days are numbered. He either behave or his downfall is coming. <laughs> so, before you think of abusing Raina Odinga and talking of... And by the way, these people were given this position just because they were good in abusing William Ruto's opponent. Sababu walikuwa na matusimengi ya kusema. They got those positions. Some people there's no merit, zero merits in those positions. So Ruto is there angry and maybe he's checking on performance and all those things, what they have been losing as a country, then he's now starting to target these people. Otherwise he could take it easy that someone came late and he could have used a different tone but language to address that issue. Because Ruto has other ways to reach out to these ministers. He can call them for a lecture in private, somewhere in office, a closed door meeting. Give lecture to this minister. Why did you come late? And all the manner of things that he has said in public, he could have said there. 
But why is he choosing to bring it publicly? Because he you know after firing someone soon, eh, there is going to be the issue of our tribe, imeanza kuonewa, and all those politics revolving around tribal politics, eh, tribal issues. So because of this, that's why he's taking it popular. Again, this is PR. He wants to appear to public that he's too much serious. So that now people will think that Ruto is seriously working. But we will ask other questions here that are very important to us. How did they sort out the issue of Korea being involved on bringing edible oil in this country where there was evasion of taxes to a tune of 6 billion? How did he address this issue? Because it is of importance. Kuchelewa komosa skuria si kwa maana sana. Kuchelewa komosa skuria eh, eh, mamba, ya, mamba ya kulipa tax na ile ushure nya wako lipa do ya muhimu zaidi. He is not addressing that. So he has given them a field to enjoy. And now he is realizing that people are watching what they are doing and seemingly they are heading to a wrong direction. That's why he is angry and looking for excuses to deal with these people. Kizole kendiki pia ya mechunguzwa. Siku ingina alikuwa anasema maandamano hiko sawa, which is right. And he was right on this. Lakini, watu wa kuandamana wasbebe before uh, maybe, don't be armed. That's what he said. An armed civilian is allowed to demonstrate. But there was a call that was made to Kithure Kendix. The following day, he changed the tone, the language changed, the approach to demonstrators was different. That means Ruto was not happy with Kithure Kendiki. That now, you want to bring the issue of respect to the constitution when Ruto is a man who was against this constitution. He did not want it. He did not want it. And after we Kithure Kendiki unakuja hapa na uloya wako, Na hiyo mambo yako ya sheria unataka kwanza kusema ya kwamba mambo ya katiba Ruto hayo kwa mambo ya katiba So after that Kithure Kindiki said we are going to crush the planners of the demonstration we are going to crush anyone who is going to be in the demonstration because someone told him to say so So it means Ruto is not also comfortable on how Kuri hmm? Kithure Kindiki is behaving because his focus is to mercilessly deal with the Kenyans. Wa pige watu marisasi, wa uwe watu, wa pige watu tia gas, wa, 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 furu, eh? wa furuge maandamano. Things like those ones. But Kindiki was not for that. He was pushed to speak something <laughs> different. So, pia yeye, chumajake kimotoni. Anaitha kabalishu ya peleke kwengine, mahali penya kuna kitu. 